I'm going to recap uh, what we did in class today. We, uh, as often happens, the way I do things, um, we kind of investigated and didn't get to a any obvious uh, conclusion or a closure with it. So um, I went ahead and put in the data on this calculator. I'm using the, I know it's a little hard to see this, these small numbers, but I'm losing, using the decade system. So the, the T goes from 0 to 8 here. Okay. And so I put those numbers in, and then, of course, <laughs> I'm trying to click the calculator buttons with my mouse. It's not going to work. work. Uh, here's the stat plot only. And I went ahead, instead of just going from 0 to 8 on the window, I went ahead and had some negative and a little bit f farther, just to see what happens a little bit around the regions, if we try to extrapolate a little bit. And then I played around, uh, like you guys were playing around, with some formulas. So for right now, just look at y1. It's 1,500 times 1.13 to the x. And that's, I noticed that six, that's not 1650. It's not the first data point. So I wasn't trying to hit the exact first data point. Let's turn that graph on. Because um, I was finding if I nailed the first data point, maybe it was kind of harder to get the rest. Now, it's not perfect. But it's not too bad. Now, one thing that, unfortunately, I forgot to remind you guys, uh, I was just spacing out in class. Um, if we go to trying to find the average relative error, I happen to have that. Let's see, that was for y2. Let me see. OK, here we go. So what we've got here, there's one crucial thing that we forgot. Um, you take the mean, the average, and you compare the y1, which is the model, minus the y2, minus the L2, rather, which is the data. And the thing is, you're supposed to take the absolute value. And I just completely spaced that. If you don't do that, then you can get some very small looking errors by, by having the errors cancel out. In fact, you could always get the error down to 0 just by kind of having them cancel out. But that doesn't mean you really got a good fit. So that absolute value is really important so that they don't cancel. Um, then divide by L2 to make it a percentage or relative error. Take the average. And what we're getting here is about 6%. Now, that's not nearly as good as the figures we were getting in the class, but that's because we weren't taking the absolute value. So I played with it a bit, and I was finding it hard to get better than 6% with this kind of model. Okay. So um, what can we do with that? Well, we can go ahead and, t and try to predict things. We can do second, uh, no, wait. We can do vars, y vars, y1 of, let's say, let's see, um, 10 decades after year 1900. OK, so we've got in, when uh, in the year 2000, the prediction of this model is there's going to be 5,091 million people, about 5 billion people, or oh, actually 2 if we round it. OK, well, the a actual number is rather bigger. It's actually 6,060. OK. so. Not incredibly good. And we can actually pretty much explain why that's not such a good model. If we just look at the graph, it really looks like the growth rate is actually getting bigger as we go. And we already knew from this model that it wasn't this region at the end that we expect to be um, the most accurate. Okay, But it's still kind of roughly following the trend. Let's see. Uh, so it's not horrible, but it's not really good. Then let's look at... What if we did y1, if we go 30 decades past? So this was too low, but it wasn't a ridiculous number. If we go 30 decades past 1900, we get 50, almost about 59,000 million, 59 billion. Wow. That's almost certainly more than the planet can handle. What if we went e just another... 200 years, this is year 2400, 50 decades after 1900, 676 billion people, OK? That's just not, that's just not realistic, OK? And we know this. We looked at the bacteria example. Exponential growth, you should never extrapolate it far, far, far into the future, because it, it just can't actually be accurate. Another thing is, um, let's, I asked about, what about back in 0 AD? And so we could do, we could step it back n minus 190 decades. 
That's going to be your 0. Ooh, 1.2 times 10 to the minus 7th. Now remember, this is the units here is millions of people. But 10 to the minus 7th millions of people is 1 tenth of a person. So about 0.12 people. Yike. That's definitely not realistic either. It's ridiculous. Okay. So the, the moral, of course, is that if you've got an exponential fit that's pretty good for a certain region, it's not going to be good out here because it's going to be too big. And it's not going to be good way out here because it's going to be way too small. Now, I wanted to mention, this isn't in the standard kind of exponential modeling package for, for sort of basic modeling. Um, the assumption here with y1, remember, was that we have a constant growth rate. That this would say every decade we get we up our population by 13%. And that's not a horrible simplistic model, but we've seen that it is, it is too simplistic. It's not really giving us incredibly good predictions, even when it should be good, like in the year 2000, OK? Because the growth rate seems to be changing. Um, but it's the standard kind of thing that you start with, like in the book. Now, but some people were being creative in class, and that's cool. And doing just a little bit more, just doing one more of our standard transformations, adding a number. So here's an example of that. We add in 1,300. And then uh, we don't need such a big factor here. So for example, I put 325 here. Um, actually, let's, let's go ahead and nail it. Let's, I, I forgot to change this. Let's nail the first one. When x equals 0, remember that's 1,900, then anything to the 0 is going to be 1. And then 1,325 plus 325 will be uh, 1,650. OK, so let's graph both of these together. There's the original graph with just an exponential. And here's the new one. Hopefully you can see, yeah, it's really much closer to nailing this thing. OK, and in fact, if we go to, um, remember, with 6% average relative error correctly calculated for y1. Now here, I've got one already in second entry with y2. I'll just do enter. 1.9% definitely much much better okay um, so that's an interesting feature and let's actually see if it predicts the future any better let's go ahead and do uh, y2 let's just replace this with a y2 so vars y vars enter and then down to y2 uh, let's not do the minus 190 yet let's do 10 so that's the year 2000 Okay, so 69.53 billion. <coughs> Excuse me. I know it's fun when I sneeze on the video. Um, it's supposed to be 60.60, so it's, it's too high, whereas this prediction was too low. Um, but it's not ridiculous, okay? So it looks like it's not some magic bullet to get this new model that's it amazingly nailed this population figure. But, um, but it is interesting that it kind of errs in the, wrong, the other direction. Then what about... Is it going to be any better for the far extrapolation stuff? Let's see. Let's do 30 decades in the future. Oops, I always do that. Um, I press graph when I mean enter. Whoa! That is utterly ridiculous. Remember, this is millions of people. That's 1.7 trillion people. So in fact, this is a worse model in terms of extrapolating in the far future. Let's see why. This one had a bigger growth rate. Um, the way the, what seemed to work best is I lift up the bottom of the graph with the plus 1350. Then I have a strong growth rate, which makes a nicely strongly curved curve. The weaker the growth rate, the more sort of straight it is. And the growth rate gave it this nice curve to seem to fit the data points. And then I didn't have a huge multiplier, because otherwise it would just be really too steep. But the thing is that 33% growth rate, that's an incredibly aggressive prediction for the growth rate. It says that we're going to get a huge population crunch. So um, we know that none of these exponential models are accurate, but that's pretty dubious. Okay, So this is a good model, it seems like, for the region that we're interested in. It's getting, it's not any worse than the model we had, the previous model, the Y1 model, for, say, year 2000. Um, but it is worse than you go go further. Then another thing you can look at that's dubious, we, which we did look at briefly in class, is the year zero prediction of a model like this. And that's, of course, that you have 1325. Why is that simply 1325? If you look at any number to a huge negative power, remember that x is minus 190, negative powers mean 1 over. So I'm taking 1.33 to the 190, which is a really huge number, and then taking 1 over that. So this just basically dies. 
That's just basically the phenomenon that any exponential function gets really close to its asymptote if you go far left. But now the asymptote is not 0. I moved it up to 1325. So you get the absurd prediction that many, many, many years ago, in fact, a billion years ago, uh, no, no matter how far you go back, as long as it's fairly far, that you're getting 1,325,000,000 million people. Okay, So it's definitely worse for extrapolating far. But the, you know, the other one wasn't that great for extrapolating far anyway. So I think it's a bit of a toss-up, actually, um, what model is preferred for this. Probably the best model would be something that use an exponential, but use, let the growth rate actually be a variable and not be a constant. OK, so some interesting adventures in modeling on that one, some unexpected results. I didn't expect people to be, put, to be adding in the vertical shift, but that was cool. And then uh, we're going to go on to logarithms next.